I've gotten a couple of comments on my Mario 64 creation asking how I made a 3D Mario model and animations. So I thought it'd be cool to put together a video like this explaining how to make 3D models in Game Builder Garage, like the one from my Mario game and other awesome creations from the community. Let's get started. This is Mr. Cube Head. His dream is to explore the world and see all kinds of different places. There's just one tiny problem, he's a disembodied head. So let's build him a body to move around on. First, we'll start setting up the base for a model. I'll place a personal node on here and make it able to move and jump. Oh, and also a camera. Now, get a teleport entrance and teleport exit node on. We'll be teleporting our model to the person node on, instead of connecting it directly. This way, it will be less wobbly and imprecise. Place any fancy object you like. I'll pick an apple and make it so the teleport entrance can only teleport this type of object. Let's connect the teleport entrance to our fancy object and the teleport exit to the person. Good! We can go ahead and make all of these guys invisible and start working on actually building our model. Let's start by adding the model's torso. I'll just place a box here and attach it to the apple that's being teleported to the person known on. Be sure to make it known solid Having solid objects in your model can make things really janky. Now, I'll connect Mr. Cube Head's head to the top of the torso. Cool! Let's give him some limbs. We'll need to use invisible objects to get everything in the right place. Place an invisible box that's about the same length as the torso and connect it to the underside of the head. Attach spheres to both sides to make his shoulders. Now for the arms. We have to use hinge connectors when connecting them to the shoulders. This is essential since we want the limbs to actually move. I'll come back to these once we start working on the model's animations. For the legs, just do about the same thing as we did for the arms. And tada! Our character is now fully modeled, though he's looking a little stiff. Let's fix that on the next step, adding the animations. Before we start animating our model, I'll explain some stuff about hinge connectors for those who aren't familiar with them. They allow child objects to rotate around their parent object, based on the value that's being received in the Nodo's input port. These connectors are the main players when it comes to animating 3D models in GBG. Make sure all connectors are set to rotate in the X-axis. Let's start by adding a flag node on. Make it so it activates whenever the control stick is being moved and turns off when it's not. Now I'll place a counter node on here. The values of this counter will dictate the angles in which the hinge connectors will rotate. Be sure to set the count mode to bounce. I'll change it to 90 and minus 90. I think that's a good range for the limb to rotate in. Next, connect the flag to the counter's counter port and the not node on to the reset port. Connect the counter's output to the arm's hinge connector and to a leg on the opposite side. Copy the counter. This time, we'll connect the flag to the countdown port and output this to the remaining limbs. Let's see how it looks. Well, he's moving alright, but really slowly. To fix this, let's add a map node on to increase the flag's output. I think 7 should do it. Ok, now it's looking really good. We gave Mr. Cubehead a super cool body with moving arms and legs. This is enough for a simple model with simple animations. But there's still a bunch of stuff we can add to make it even cooler. Let me show you how to do some of that. If we'd like to give our character a jumping animation, the first thing we need is a touch sensor to detect when the player is on ground. Let's quickly add that and attach it to our model. It's really important to connect it to the model itself and not the person node on. This way it won't get triggered by the objects in the model as they're part of the same connection group. Place a non-node on and a map node on. 
This will output an angle of rotation to the hinge connectors whenever the player is in midair. I think 75 should do it. Also make it so the notch node on resets the counter we used for the walk animations. Let's see how it looks. Awesome! Now our model has different animations for walking and jumping. Next, let's make it so Mr. Cube Head can perform some sick flips. Just like Mario here. First, place an X hinge connector and use it to attach the model's torso to the Apple Fancy object. Now, to make it actually rotate, we'll need a counter connected to that hinge. Set the count mode to loop and the range to 360. Next, attach a speed connector to the person node on and connect the Z port's output to the counter's counter port. Alright, he's rotating, but he's only supposed to do that while in midair. To fix this, head back to the programming screen and place a multiply node on between the speed sensor and the counter, and attach the not node on we use to detect when the model is in the ground to the lower part of the multiplier. Let's test it out. Looks like it's working perfectly. Mr. Cube Head looks so cool doing all those flips. Seems like our hard work really paid off. Now the tutorial is over, but there's still one more thing I made for you guys. It's a template featuring 8 3D models of popular game characters, each using different types of animations to fully come to life. Steve is the most basic, but also the most accurate to how he's animating the source material. He looks just like he does in Minecraft. Mario is a well-rounded model that uses all of the animations that were taught in this tutorial. Kirby here was made using two different techniques to make him stand out. He has semi-spheres for his feet, which were made with the help of the texture node on, and his arms rotate around his body in both the X-axis and the Z-axis. Pac-Man has two semi-spheres, which rotate together to make his mouth open and close. Look, it's a Fall Guy! This little fella makes use of two movement joints in its arms to get the running animation just right. Pikachu here is an example of how to make four-legged models for animal-like characters. It's the Prince of All Cosmos or Katamari. A hinge connector is used to make it look like he's rolling the Katamari around. And now, the most complex model of the bunch, Samus. She has two movement joints in each limb, and her body leans forward when she's running, making her animations more realistic than the rest. She's so cool! This 3D model template is available now to be downloaded in Game Builder Garage with the code in the description. You can use the characters here in your own games, or take a look at how they are made to get ideas for your own 3D models. And that wraps up the video! <laughs> My mic just fell. It's my first time doing a tutorial like this and I really hope you guys enjoy it. Um, if you made it this far into the video, maybe consider subscribing if you haven't already, it will help out a ton. Also, are there any other tutorials you guys would like me to do? Feel free to leave a comment with your suggestions. Well, thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time.